we all try to be there as much as possible. But then you get these moments, these like little glimmers of like hope. You know, he'd be at a show and he would do a lot of like local shows. Like he'd do a lot of XWW shows. He'd do a lot of like Trans South shows in South Carolina. And, you know, OSCW was is actually where I wrestled him back in uh, 2011. I think it was around Hanahan, South Carolina. And I remember when Reed first started, when I first would wrestle Reed, like in Northeast Wrestling, he was trying to like, I don't want to do that because my dad did it, you know, because he looked at what David did and he felt like David copied a lot of what his father did. And he was trying to be different, but he didn't know where, where he wanted to go or what he wanted to do. He did some William Regal stuff, so it is true that he had an influence there. He was always trying to do something fancy wrestling-wise. He was trying to figure something out. Then when I wrestled him in 2011, I was like, what do you want to do? He goes, oh, I'm just doing all my dad's stuff because I know it works. And I'm like, well, okay, well, we could do all that, but is there anything else new or anything you want to try? So I was like, oh, how about this or how about that? So like, I was just there for him and supportive for him. And I'll tell you what. We had a good good match. Oh, it was, man. I looked awful. That single that I wore was horrible, <laughs> by the way. <laughs> so, Blinded by the white, I yeah. believe this they called it. Yeah. I wish uh, you could look back at that match and I would have better gear, but <laughs> I remember having that match and, and like I remember him just being there for everything and listening and coming up with them and just being there for all the spots. And I just remember like having that match and then just being like, man, this is the kid that, that, that should be out there, you know? And I, I, this was like... Obviously, social media kind of developed and Facebook had kind of become a thing. And I remember just thinking about it because I was driving back home from South Carolina and I actually pulled over on the side of the road and I made this Facebook post, you know, like, I know there's a lot of things said about Reed Flair, but I just wrestled him tonight and he was incredible. And any promoter that gets an opportunity to book him, you should. He's, he's so professional. He's great in the ring. He's a, a welcome addition to any locker room that you're going to have him in. And you got to book him. He's, he's definitely, definitely worth it. Uh, or something along those lines. But I just felt like people had said so many bad things about him that somebody needed to step up and say something good about him. And I remember him hopping in the ring truck with me for a show, another show in South Carolina where we had to do the ring. And I think I wrestled Scotty too hotty that night. And <laughs> Reed just wanted an opportunity to just wrestle on the show. And we kind of could just make the card. All they, all they wanted was Scotty too hotty on the show. <laughs> and anybody else could be anybody else. So like, I was like, Reed, if you want to show up early and be in the ring truck, you can come down with me and we can set up the ring and you can be on the show. And he goes, yeah. And sure, sure enough, he showed up early. He didn't show up late. He got in the ring truck, helped set up the ring. He went and found a broom himself and started sweeping out the ring. And I remember just, like, if I had a camera phone, I would have took a picture of it. I would have put it on Instagram, and I just would have been like, this is the Reed Flair that I want the world to see. This kid set up the ring and was sweeping it out just so he could wrestle on the show that night. I think he wrestled, like, the second match or whatever, but he was just happy to be there and happy to be around professional wrestling, and I just just fucking wish we would have got more of that kid. But something would always fucking happen. And anytime you felt like you had him at that point, you know, that you're like, okay, he's been humbled. He's here. He's, he's focused on this. Like there are times when he would wrestle for XWW or like PWX or others. And it's like, okay, Reed's back and he's focused on professional wrestling. And yes, this is going to be the moment where, where it comes around, you know? And he was always, always a blast to hang out with too. Like it's a tragedy. I mean, it, I mean, Think about, you know, when people talk about the heroin epidemic and the opioids, and I just, it's like, I knew somebody that succumbed to that. And um, it didn't have to be that way. It didn't have to be that way at all. He definitely should still be here today. And, um, you know, Michael talks about how Charlotte you know, has several tattoos that remember and honor him. I got to see how close those those two actually are because um, Ashley would show up at the office and, and train from time to time and, and Reed would be there because Ashley was, I think she was either signed or she was had a start date or she was for sure going to NXT or the Performance Center or whatever they had at, at the time. She was going to the developmental system, but she just kind of wanted to try it out and see if it was for her, or get a feel for it, you know, kind of like, see what she's in for and reed would be there and when ashley would have like a difficulty grasping something or she'd have a tough time with something i always remember reed would be there because i 
right next to the ring at that time, my, my edit bay was right there. So I was trying to ignore Rick as much as possible and trying to focus on the work. But when Rick wasn't there, I'd kind of pay attention casually listening. And, and when Ashley would have like a rough bump or something wasn't going right, you know, she would be very hard on herself, but Reed would be right there for her and be like, Ashley, it's okay. Ashley, you're going to be so good. Ashley, you're going to be so much better than me. Like you're going to, you're going to be the one that everybody talks about in her family. You're like, you're going to, you're going to do her family so proud. You're going to be awesome. He was such a wonderful, amazing brother and a cheerleader for his sister who's become one of the best wrestlers in the entire world. And, you know, who knows? If she didn't have that early encouragement on those first couple steps in her career, she might not be who she is today or even a wrestler at all. If it wasn't for him pushing her along and encouraging her and being there for her as a brother, you know, we can, we can talk about him being a wrestler and the mistakes that he made, but he was an amazing brother, an amazing guy. And... At the High Spots office, we have a lot of people's autograph pictures when you come into the office, and, and one of them just happens to be Reed's. And I can't tell you how many times since his passing that I've walked into the office early morning, mid-afternoon, Sunday afternoon, late night, whenever, and probably when we get done and i got to go to the office later on at night and i got to walk in and look at that wall right at the front of the office, I'll probably look at Reed's picture like I do from time to time just stop what I'm doing and just go this didn't have to happen you should be here today and that's what I think of every time I think of him he should be here today none of this should have happened